Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to Not Quite Homesteading. Um, I am in the garden. Y'all, it is cold today, okay? I mean, cold. <laughs> like, I talked about it being unseasonably cold in like one of my videos recently and ciao. It feel like we in the north right now. Ask me how I know, cause <laughs> that's where I grew up. But it is like, I want to say it may be like 50 degrees now. When I woke up this morning, it was um, 40, maybe like 44. And it said the real feel was like <laughs> 39. So it is a little warmer, but definitely not warm enough to be out here with absolutely like nothing on. <clears throat> and the wind is really going crazy. It's knocked quite a few of my plants down. So I do need to pick those up. But I came out here because tonight it is supposed to get down to 39 degrees. And then the real feel for that is supposed to be 29. Lord, they done knocked my tomatoes over. Oh, uh, now this might be my fault because <laughs> these tomatoes should have been tied uh, a little while ago. But I haven't tied them yet. So now, guess what? <laughs> They're on the ground. So I have a lot of work I need to do today and y'all I am not ready but look at my plants like my plants are, they are like man down man down so we got to pick this up this is the second time in like two weeks that this plant has fallen now it is my fault because of how I have this state over here the wood is definitely making the plant heavier than it should be and then I don't have an excuse for this one I think that also is an indication that they need to be watered because um, that means the soil doesn't have any weight to it it's like all types of stuff is blowing around I have to pick my limes y'all my limes are yellow I'm pretty sure they're not supposed to be like that like not supposed to be picked like that I mean you can but it is definitely time to harvest like our citrus. Everything is looking good though. I'm telling you these, um, oh wow. Is that what I think it is? That is not what I think it is, not yet. I'm looking at the Brussels sprouts and they have those little like leaves in the corner now I don't think that those are Brussels sprouts just yet because Brussels sprouts for us are not supposed to sprout until the spring which is why we plant them in the fall to get um to give the plant time to grow but I'm seeing things that look like they may sprout earlier than it's supposed to but that could just be wishful thinking too um the rascals are looking really good. I wore it last on Sunday. What is that? Is that a snail? I mean, I keep calling them snails a slug. I don't know what that is, but it's stuck in there. <sighs> I wore it last on Sunday. I am inclined to water again today because you definitely don't want your plants in dry soil when you're on the like verge of getting a potential freeze so i think i might have to water today just a little bit everything looks so good i am going to harvest the greens that i can harvest in addition to probably just gonna like cut out some of these peppers and start pulling the plants down now for reference it is november 1st so i do need to do it anyway but um Y'all probably won't see this video. Y'all probably won't see this video <laughs> for a couple of weeks after that. So I'm just sharing that for reference, it is November 1st. Today is the day that we are supposed to see freezing, and I say freezing, near freezing temperatures. 
um and that is definitely ahead of our scheduled first for us so it's been unseasonably cold and i think that's happening for everybody which is kind of sucky but i guess it is what it is y'all look at my plants they didn't threw my whole plant on the ground this is the wind so i have to do something about this today too this is me not staking my plants like i was supposed to um because i have been just a little bit more free <laughs> about what i'm gonna concern myself with and what i'm not but um oh look at these look at these early girls they got really big something ate a hole in one which is very annoying um i keep getting these army worms and such so i hope that those survive i said i i want to try i want to try covering them up tonight i don't know how i'm going to do it because of how i have the bed planted but i think i'm going to try something i'm going to at least try but i don't know what that something is these plants look good cauliflower broccoli cabbage all that y'all can see holes i did spray these i might need to spray them again for sure need to spray them again but i cannot see like any worms now i'll be honest i did not lift the net up either you know but i clearly see chunks and chunks of my plants that are missing so somebody is in here and they have gone from baby to adult. I could tell by the bites. <laughs> um, I am gonna pick these collard greens now. I didn't let these collard greens get way bigger than I like them. But I do wanna pick them, open them up so that we can give room to some of the other plants while they're growing back. I am very, very upset with how many bites in my plants especially because they're covered <laughs> this is not making any sense to me and i'm not even certain like how somebody would be breaching like i know i have a little opening like a, a slight opening here and i know that that um army worm moth can definitely get into that but and there's one on the net too she must want to die today <laughs> Cause like if you don't get off of here <laughs> yes oh, got her stepped on her <laughs> like get out of here we are tired of y'all <sighs> so yeah i'm gonna come out here in a little bit i need to eat breakfast first <laughs> get a little energy up it's time for me to do a few things i am loving the way my bunch of onions look oh yes it is their season I said I need to plant some more of these seeds so we can have plenty of bunching onions. Definitely something I want to make sure. Oh, this is actually still slightly moist too, but hmm, I'm wondering if I need to water that. It's like moist. But I don't know. And then we got a cabbage that looks like it's starting to form a head here. So my thinking with this was obviously by the time these got like the Brussels sprouts got really big, the cabbage would be out of here. But it seems like the Brussels sprouts are on a mission to, I don't know, get to their height really quickly. So I, was like, I hope that those don't impede each other from growing properly. And I'm just checking over here. Because we've had some bean flowers for a little bit. Oh, I'm starting to see beans. Yay. Okay. Very happy about that. My cilantro is looking good. I need to, I want to cut it and try to spur growth. I probably could stand to harvest these radishes too. I'm so far behind with my uh, radish harvest. But, listen. You just can't do everything perfectly. And then these are the Georgia collards. I'm going to harvest these as well. Oh, yeah, they feel good. Um, everything's looking a little pale. Like, I definitely need to fertilize. It's time for me to fertilize for sure. It's the beginning of the month. But I am, like, worried about my plants with this wind. And there's really nothing I 
can do to shield them from the wind because that is just the nature of the climate. <laughs> so we got cabbages over here. So I wanna pull these off to make sure um, I give these cabbages a little bit of room to spread out, but they have started heading too. Uh, really small, but they're heading. And then y'all can see the eggplant is not properly secure. So I'm probably gonna harvest these too, pin, stake this plant up, and then hopefully it survives the night. Because after that, our temperatures are supposed to go back up quite a bit. Oh, and I'm definitely gonna pull all of these off. This looks so pretty. Like just all this uh, red pepper fruit. These Thai pepper plants are really, really gorgeous. But the good thing about this, aside from these little brown moths, is I think that these temperatures should really send all of the bugs packing. Oh, wow. Look at this green bean. I didn't even know that these were still growing. So maybe I will save seeds from these. Like, how do I know when these are ready, y'all? They are humongous. Like, do they turn colors like other plants? I'm going to save seeds for me. These are Kentucky Wonder Pole beans. I had no idea they were still growing because I surely have not been watering them. But when I come back to do the work, I'm just going to like take y'all along. I probably won't do a lot of talking during that portion. But then I guess um, I could at the end show y'all what we actually get done because there's a lot to do and the temperatures are going to drop pretty early so let's see what we can get done So I want to say real quick y'all, I did not realize this Cuban oak tree was one tree. I thought this was two trees. That's how well this tree has produced and how big it is. I'm definitely overwintering this tree. It is a tree at this point. Look at how big this is. This is literally a tree on its own. I'm definitely keeping this. This is like an established plant and, and I mean established, established. This plant got off to a good early start and it just took off. I could have swore this was two plants this whole time. This is insane.
So I didn't realize this video ended up abruptly, y'all, but I did want to say thank you for staying with me in the garden today as we got the summer cleanup done. It's always great to have an audience along for these types of things because no one wants to really do the cleanup, but I'm glad that we got it done and we can move on to the next phase of transplanting. I appreciate you guys for spending time with me as always. Don't forget to check out the description box below for our affiliate links. I list all of the garden products I use there that are favorites and that I use almost every day in the garden. Let's keep learning, sewing, and growing together, friends, until our next garden update. All right, y'all. So I decided that I was gonna overwinter some of my pepper plants. Um, I did a Serrano, Cubanelle, and part of the construction, I don't know what's going on. Cubanelle, I have Shishito. I did a green leader belt because y'all know the struggle I have with those this year starting seed. I did one of my ivory bells and I did three of my King Arthur bells. So we'll have a head start on some of the peppers that I enjoyed the most and that were pretty productive. And then the shishito, I just wanted to see how that did in overwintering. I don't think this particular plant did as well as it could have simply because I had so many plants around it. But I'm going to see how it does next year. I'll try to put it somewhere where it has like a ton of free space to just kind of do its own thing. But yeah, that is what I decided to do. This was not in the plan. I thought about it. I wasn't really sold on the idea. More so because I didn't have anywhere to put them. <laughs> and then because for us, like right now it's November, I would be planting peppers again in January. It's not really a long overwintering season for us. So I was trying to see if there was really like a benefit in doing it, but I guess I won't know unless I try. So that's what we're doing this year. Mm -hmm. 